Pastor Jerry here, and here's the Sermon Breakdown. We are to submit to those who have authority over us. But we're doing it for the Lord. He is, interesting enough, it's a way of worship. The love and grace of the gospel. If a ruling authority ever tells you to do anything against the word of God, feel free to ignore him. And it's through his death, burial, and resurrection that we can learn how to submit to governing authorities, even unjust ones. But do it for the glory of God. Well, this week we went over a sermon that was titled A Good Citizen for Christ. A Good Citizen for Christ from 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, 13 through 17. And I opened up this the sermon by talking about well, what does it mean to be a good citizen of this country and understand that we are actually citizens of two countries. One, the citizen of God, uh, of the kingdom of heaven, and a citizen of, uh, for most of us, a citizen of the United States. And how do these two different realms interact? Because though we are citizens of heaven, we have to live in this realm. And how do we interact with in the society and be, be good citizens of the society, but also understanding that who we are in Christ, how these two fit together. And so let me read the verse that we were looking at, and starting in verse 13, it says, Be subject for the sake of the Lord to every human institute, where to a king as one in authority, or to a governor as set by him for the punishment of evildoers, and the praise of those who do good. For such is the will of God, that by doing good you may silence the ignorance of foolish men, act as free people, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as slaves of God. Honor all people, love the brethren, and fear God. And in this passage, we looked at three things. We looked at to submit to authority, the reason to submit, and how to submit. And so part of being a good citizen, part of being part of this the society, is being a good citizen of this country, and ultimately, as we'll see, to give glory to God. And so the first idea is this idea, submit to authority. Now this word submit is to is a military board, but it's a term meaning submit under someone else. So submit under someone's authority, submit under someone's order, submit, and it's often a term for a commander has orders for soldiers, and the soldiers submit under authority of that commander, and this is what they to do. And nor is that supposed to be doing that side, but as Christians, we are to submit to authority. And um, and not just and it's to every human authority, and where you like the president or don't like the president, the president is the ultimate authority. It talks about a king. Some Bibles say emperor, but that would be for us the president of the United States, no matter who is there. No, is that that? But also it talks about governor. So whatever the governor you have. Uh, for us, it's in uh, Maine. It is Janet Mills right now. It could be someone else. It could be the governor of California, Gavin Newsom. Whoever your governor, you're to submit. But it even goes even lower than that. We could be talking about submitting to your police authorities, submitting to um, uh, firemen, uh, soldiers, whatever. There are certain authorities that have been placed over you. And the surprising thing, as you look at this passage, not only to submit to these stories, but why they're there. And it talks about they're there to punish evil and praise good. And so they are a God-instituted authority. The God has placed them there. And where you like them or not, God has placed them there, and they're there to sustain evil. Restrain evil. And, and, and in fact, if we go through the Bible, we'll see there's three institutes that God sets up. One is the family. One is the church. And 
The third is government. And the whole point of government is to restrain evil and punish good. Do they do it perfectly? No. Are there any perfect government? No. But in general, that is our purpose. And in fact, that's why we have laws. That's why we elect people is to punish evil and encourage good. That is a point of government and that's it. Uh, often government goes beyond that role, but that is our essential goal. The key though in this passage, as we look at it, especially in the first two verses, is that God tells us to submit to the authorities as to the Lord. In other words, this when we submit to authority and submit to those who are above us, is as we do it to the Lord, and know it is an act of worship, is an act of obedience to God. It's something that we do because God has called us to do it in obedience and honor to God that we submit to those authorities. So it changes our perspective that now we see authority as something we do, we submit to it to give glory and praise to God. Now, as it goes on in the patch, he talks about the reason to submit, and that's in 15 and 16. And he says, it is a will of God that, that one of the things why we need to submit to authorities is the secular authorities, especially in Paul's day, they, they were in Turkey and in a Roman culture, they were being um, slandered as evildoers and doing wrong. And even now in today's society, Christians are saying, you Christians are hateful, you're bigoted, you're, un, uh, you're unloving. And so one of the ways we correct misconceptions of Christian is living the good life. As, as we talked about in the earlier uh, passage of 11, verse 11, 12, last week, we talked about we are to live a good, beautiful, godly, honoring life that people look at our lives and they say, wow, as if that's a Christian, well, that's what I want to be like. And so we live a God-honoring life, and people see it and say, well, maybe these Christians are not a bad influence in the community. Maybe they're a good influence of the community. And so we are to live a life, a God-honoring life, that they would see them corrected, that they have false assumptions about Christians. But no one does he talk about that. But also he talks about that Christians can sometimes use their freedom and say, well, now that I have been forgiven... I can go and get drunk, or I can go ahead and have sex, whatever, because I'm a Christian, I've been forgiven Christ, Christ will forgive me, and they do not live a God life, but they live an ungod life, and they use their freedom in Christ to sin. Or, another way is, well, because Jesus is my sovereign, because he's my Lord, I get to ignore the President of the United States, I get to know, ignore the police officer, because they're not the real authority. I mean, it's God, and so I can ignore them. And what Peter is saying there is, no, you can't do that. You need to live a good guy life as a good example, and you cannot be using your uh, your citizenship in heaven, your the Jesus Lord, as an excuse to sin, because it creates a bad witness in the world. And so now, if you use as an excuse to sin, now you are proven them true that we are evildoers and we don't want to do that and so if we want to be good citizens of this uh, country and be seen as good citizens we need to live out that good beautiful christian life finally in verse 17 he then gives us how we are to submit and and some some uh understanding and the first thing he says honor all people and and we need to honor authority to honor other people. Because how we act in society doesn't just reflect how we affect the rules and authority, but affects other people. If you are wild, if you're rambunctious, if you are doing things that are sinful, it isn't only just rebelling against the authorities, but it affects the world around you. When a, a, when a pastor falls because of moral issues and is caught in adultery, it doesn't just affect uh, that person, but it affects everyone. When we, when Christians are attacked in abortion clinics, that's wrong because it's not only uh, uh, we shouldn't be attacking people, but it's not honoring the community, it's not honoring society, and so we need to be willing to submit to authority in a God honoring way. Uh, and and as I just hit, also, is not only does that affect. Uh, the city or community you live in, but affects the brothers. Because when we live out a bad witness for Christ, 
not only does that reflect upon ourselves, but affects upon Christians because how I act as a Christian, and so I wear a jersey that says Jesus Christ is Lord, and I wear that, and people will say, oh, that's what a Christian looks like. And when I use my, use my freedom to do evil, it no longer reflects bad in society, but it reflects badly upon my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's not loving to them. So how I comport myself that affects the, how people see my witness towards myself and to other brothers. And so we want to bring honor to our brothers so we live a God on our way. It then says, uh, fear God. And then this is this fearful reverence of God, that he's our sovereign, he's our, our Lord, we are to re represent him, we are his ambassadors. And it reminds us that our first primary person that we submit to, the first primary person we give honor to, the first person we give worship to is God. And so that helps us keep us straight that, yes, we are to uh, submit to the earthly authorities, it reminds us the first and foremost authority we spend to is to God. And so it keeps us straight there about when or when we should not submit to earthly authority because there are exceptions. And then uh, finally he then talks about uh, honor the king. And this is not talking about God, but this goes back to the initial part of honoring the emperor or honoring the king or honoring the president. And again, that we are to do that. We are to honor and give him praise to God. And in fact, uh, Paul talks about we need to uh, give honor when honor is due, respect when respect is due, uh, taxes when taxes are due, goods when goods are due. And to we are, uh, Jesus talks about we should pray for our leaders. And so this is something we, we need to do as we do this thing called submit to authority. Now, real quickly, there are exceptions to when we are to submit to authority, and that is whenever. Uh, what we're being called to submit to, our governing authority submit, goes against God's word. So if they ask us a, uh, to stop preaching the gospel, we can ignore that. If it tells us to do something that is sinful and immoral, we can ignore that. And so the times that we do not have to submit to authority is when they call us to do something that is against God's word. That would be the exception. But when we do it, we do it in a God-honoring, loving way. We do it gentle with some respect when we say, no, sorry, I have to follow God's word. Um, finally thing, and, and this will later on, we'll talk about this here, is to understand that this, Jesus submitted to God, his father, and he submitted to the Jewish leader. He submitted to Pontius Pilate and his submit, he submitted to death, yes, death on the cross. And so Jesus models his idea of submitting to authority and when to submit and when he does it, because some tell you that, but he ultimately submits to his authority and he does it for a purpose of giving glory to God. His death, burial, resurrection leads to our transformation. And through that, we, through Jesus, can learn how to submit to authority. Now, real quickly, I want to leave you with a couple of questions. Um, I encourage you to, I'll just tell you, look at Romans 13, 1 through 7. It talks a little bit more about this. Paul explains a little bit more. I just want to get into three questions. Why do we struggle with spinning authority? And think about why do we struggle with spinning authority? And part of it is it goes against we don't want to submit. We're prideful. We're arrogant. And that makes it hard for us to submit. Uh, number two, why does not submitting to authority make a bad witness to the world? Why is it when we're rebellious to authority, why is that a bad witness? Why does that reflect badly on Christ? A uh, third, how does seeing submitting to authority as an act of worship and a worship change how you approach authority? So when you understand that uh, submitting to authority is an act of worship to God, and what he's called you to do, how does that change it? Finally, let me just say, may you submit to authority as an act of worship and witness in the world. Uh, this has been the Sermon Breakdown. God bless you. Have a great week. And oh, let's stop that. If you like these videos, please like, share, subscribe, and ring that bell. God bless you. Have a good day.